Hey everybody, it's Peter from Brantford Kia and welcome to our live video series. We do this every weekday at two o'clock. We go live in our video bay here and we take a look at the Kia product. So today we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna take a look at my personal car, which we've done before, but now I've had it for a year. And I'm gonna take the Kia badge off and I'm gonna tell you honestly what I like and don't like about this car and how it's been over the past one year. So that's where we're headed today. Uh, if you're just joining us and you're not watching live, you can do one of two things. You can skip ahead to the three minute mark. That's where the video will really get going. We'll just let a few people join us. Uh, if you are uh, watching live or if you'd like to watch live, let me show you how to join us weekdays live. So let me just uh, jump over here. And let me just flip the camera around. There we go. Here is my computer. Here we go. If you're not, uh, sometimes these videos get embedded in other places. So if you're not on YouTube, head over to YouTube, go in the search uh, bar here, search for Brantford Kia. Once you find Brantford Kia, you're gonna go to that page exactly at two o'clock Eastern time in the afternoon. When you refresh the page, one of two things will happen. Sometimes our live video does this. It shows up right now like this. Sometimes it doesn't show up and you have to hit this videos tab. When you click that, the very first video, it will look just like this, we'll have a Live Now tab. So you're looking for that Live Now tab. So again, if it doesn't show on the home page, click the Videos tab right here and click the Live Now tab. Once you click the Live Now, you are in our live video. You'll see a comment there. Perfect, we've got someone up. All right, so we're gonna zoom into those comments. I am bringing those over to my big screen. The reason I'm blowing this up a little bit is so that I can see them from across the room. So like I said, we do this every weekday. Uh, we talk about all kinds of things. Today, I'm gonna to talk a lot more as a regular person, not a Kia employee. I've uh, cleared with my general manager that I'm allowed to talk about the things I don't like. Uh, I've cleared with my general manager that I'm allowed to talk about another vehicle that I own. Uh, so we've got a few things going on and I'm just basically gonna tell you honestly uh, what I like and don't like about this car. So um, real quick, we got another minute before we really get going here. If you're interested in an EV, we have at least five Kia Soul EVs in stock still. Uh, we have a number of Kia Niro EVs in transit. We had one in here the other day that was uh, the 2021, or sorry, 2020 model, which is the newest model. Uh, model years can get a little confusing, but we just had the, the updated 2020 model in stock. The first one we had is sold. We have other ones coming in that are sold. We have several that are not sold. So if you're interested in a Kia Soul EV, Kia Niro EV, no matter whether you want long range or short range, we have them all in stock or we will be very soon. In other words, we have actual VIN numbers. You can get these cars. Uh, you can take them home essentially today. So uh, the idea being with, uh, if you're coming from out of town, if you book an appointment in the morning, in theory, we could deliver as soon as that afternoon. So uh, you can hang in town with us and go home with a brand new electric vehicle. So that's where we're at. All right, we're at the three minute mark. So we're gonna actually get going now. So what I wanted to do is I talked to Tim about this. Tim's our general manager. And I said, why don't I do a one year ownership review of this car? where I can strip off my Kia badge, I can talk to you as a consumer. Um, I'm fairly knowledgeable about EVs in general, I think. Uh, I think it's fair to say that. Um, and I can tell you what I like, what I don't like, and uh, we'll go through. Now, spoiler alert, this is you know, still gonna seem like a sales pitch because I really, really like this car. But we'll talk about honestly, I'll show you the things that are in this car. We'll show you uh, the good, the bad, and everything. The ugly, some will say, <laughs> and uh, we'll go through. So real quick, let me just show you what we've got. Um, let me just grab my key. Just to prove to you it's not a dealership car, I've got my own personal key tag on there, house keys on there. So uh, that's what we've got. Uh, I'm gonna jump in here. We're gonna just turn it to on just because it has been a pandemic year as most of you have probably figured out. And uh, let me just jump in, I'm gonna zoom in here. 13,486 kilometers. So that is not a ton of kilometers. Uh, we probably would have put more on had we, um, you know, my wife hasn't been at work since March. So uh, this car's had normally. Um, but we are going to talk about, like I said, things we like, things we don't like. Um, we'll go through and uh, I'm going to start on the outside just because I think I'm going to finish with a lot of inside stuff. Uh, real quick, if at any point there's something in this video that you could give me a like for, you guys know how YouTube works. Uh, likes are kind of helpful, so if you want to give some likes, my boss likes to see that. And I like to, there's about 16, 17 of you on now. Uh, if I can get 16, 17 likes early in the video, that would be great. I appreciate that. All right, so here's a couple of things that I like. Let's just start on the outside. Overall, I like the 2020 redesign. The 2020 Kia Soul looks really sharp. Um, to me, it's not for everybody, and that's okay. Um, I, I think the fact that it looks a little funky is kind of cool. 
Uh, those of you looking for the story, I'm going to get the Neptune blue, which is the sort of the brighter blue. I don't know if I have anything nearby that I can show you the exact same color. Let me just light it out here. Kind of right up there. It's a little bit closer to that forte blue over there, but that's not showing up very well. A little bit closer to that blue over there. So it's a little bit like that. I was going to get that. Uh, not the Ford GT uh, four, four there. We'll talk about that at the end of the video. Anyways, I was going to get the blue color, but uh, as you know, availability was tough, especially a year ago. And uh, I got told that I could have a gray one today, or I could wait a month to six weeks for the blue one. So I called my wife and said, how do you feel about a gray car? And my audio is coming from elsewhere. Audio is weird. Interesting. I don't know how to fix that. So I have a new phone, and it worked the other day. Let me just see. I don't know if my microphone's working for you guys or not. Sounds funny, you guys are saying? So tell me what you think. Still sounds funny, guys? We I did get a new phone. Cannot hear me. Another mic. Hmm. Check your mic. Everybody's saying check your mic, but the problem is I don't actually have a mic. I'm just using my cell phone. Let me just flip this around again. Is that clear, guys? Is that uh, clear microphone-wise? If you're using a separate mic, I haven't been using a separate mic. I've been using my phone. Oh, you know what's going on? Uh, okay. Low and distant is my... No better this way. Okay, let me just see. All right, bear with me, guys. I'm going to pop my phone out of this case, and we're going to go with this. Oh, Bluetooth in the car, of course. Come on. Hold on one second. That's exactly what it is. Bluetooth in the car. You guys are brilliant. Of course it's working well. Let me just cancel my Bluetooth in here. Hold on a second, guys. I don't want to show you my phone number. Sorry, guys. You guys solved my problem for me. Okay. Da, 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 da. Where is the Bluetooth? There we go. Can you hear me now? Is that better, guys? Somebody give me a thumbs up or something if it's better. Can you hear me at all? Okay. Bluetooth in the car. Yes, so this is better. This is back to normal. Okay, sorry, guys. Car's on. Bluetooth is on. Sorry about that. So when I film with this, uh, the Bluetooth in the car picks up. All right, we're just going to start right back. So seven and a half minutes in. Sorry about that. We're going to flip around. Let me show you. There we go. Okay, great, Bluetooth. So the Bluetooth works great, <laughs> yeah. All right, I apologize, guys. I hadn't thought that through. Uh, Bluetooth, I never do this with a car that my phone is paired in Bluetooth, so um, I apologize for the sound quality. We'll have to uh, put a little note at the beginning of this video uh, to warn people. All right, okay, so we'll just start fresh. What do I like, what do I not like? I've been given permission to talk about anything I like, anything I don't like in this car. And um, what I really like about the car is the updated styling. The 2020 styling is not for everybody, but I quite like it. Um, one thing I think they should have put on is roof rails. Not a huge deal to me. I am an outdoorsy kind of person. I know that they're doing everything for, um, for mileage and that taking roof rails off the 2020 sole is probably just a mileage thing. But the side rails I think would have been helpful for me. I'm a kayaker, so that's my only complaint. Uh, about the outside, the styling. I quite like the overall look. We're gonna talk lighting and a few other things. So basically where we're headed in the next 20 minutes or half an hour is I'm gonna go around the whole car, tell you everything I like and don't like after owning it for one year. Um, so those of you that missed the audio at the beginning just because my Bluetooth was connected, I apologize. All right, let me show you, let's start down here. Let's talk tires and wheels. My wife is not a fan of the styling of these wheels. I kind of am. I think it looks kind of cool. Those aren't different colors. Uh, what it is is just, they're angled differently and they hit light differently. I think they're pretty cool and I guess they're aerodynamic. What I didn't realize initially is those fancy panels are actually plastic. And when I uh, swap the wheels in this car, you can really feel that um, the weight difference between something like this and a winter tire, both the tires and wheels are fairly lightweight, which contributes to fuel efficiency. I will say I recommend winter tires with these cars. Uh, these Nexons are pretty good all year round. There's a lot of torque in this car. We'll talk about that in a bit. And in the wet weather, it can slip. And in the cold, wet weather, um, you can slip quite a bit. So winter tires are a recommendation. They will affect range. We're going to talk about range in a little bit. Other things I really, really like, these little LED um, marker lights are kind of cool looking. They look pretty sharp. They're actually fairly bright. They won't show up on camera, mostly because I have the headlights on. But they're actually fairly bright when your headlights are off. I have the headlights on right now. Um, probably the best thing about this car are the headlights and fog lights. They are exceptionally bright. When we talk about luxury cars, um, these cars have luxury car lighting that is um, exceptional. Uh, are, they, are the lights adaptive? So we'll talk about that in a second. Um, 
If you buy this car, you're gonna be blown away by the headlights, they're extremely good. They are not adaptive, as in they don't turn with the steering wheel, uh, which doesn't really bother me. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know that a lot of cars need that. I don't know that it makes sense because by the time you're turning the wheel, you know, you already wanna see around the corner before you turn around the corner. So if you're heading down the road and the road turns, to me, you wanna see around the corner before you start turning around the corner, but that's okay. Um, but I do, I, I will say that the, uh, they are pretty cool. Yeah, no, for, no question. The automatic high beam on this car is among the best I've seen. I used to review cars for the major newspaper in Canada and uh, I've done a lot of tests or driven a lot with these uh, light headlights that turn on and off by themselves. Uh, these are among the best. They turn on and off when they see cars and they see taillights, but they also turn off in town with street lights, which is really cool. So that is something good. Somebody said the tiger nose grill this car needs. Well, did you know that the soles do have a tiger nose grill? Right there is the pinch and right there is the pinch. And with the license plate, you don't see it as much, but the soles do have, especially in the non-electric, you'll see it, that tiger nose grill. Come alongside here, uh, just cool little detailing. The GT line sole has a little red line down here. This one's got a nice little accent line down there, which is just a silver type look. Looks sharp, I like it. I really like the LED lights at the back. They're bright, they look sharp to me. And there you go, they look pretty cool. So just overall styling, I'm a fan of. We're gonna talk about ownership though. Do you wish your EV model had the GT trim grill? I don't know, I don't know. I, I'm okay with it like this. What's cool about the EV is the grill out front here is painted, which looks pretty sharp. So um, I will say the gas engine ones, the GT line has the best looking grill. So I'll agree with that. I'm not, I'm not stuck on it though. I think it's pretty cool. The LED signal lights in the front look cool too uh, when they're on. We'll show you the charge port actually. While we're here, we'll just take a quick look at it. Charge port simple. Uh, so a couple things, the previous year Kia Soul had like a little, um, you know, like the release on the gas door on a gasoline car. Uh, and on the front of the car, snow and ice can build up here. I live in Canada, obviously you guys know that. And snow and ice can build up. So having this door released by pushing it um, works really well. I will say that there's a little arrow here. If you don't push to the right of that arrow, in other words, the driver's side of that arrow, it sometimes doesn't lock. So it's very difficult to work from there. You gotta push right on the edge there and it uh, opens up. Another nice thing that, it's just one of those things you don't notice. There's a little light in there and that light for the charge port is super helpful when you're plugging in at night somewhere. Uh, just gives you exactly what you need to see uh, everything there. The other cool thing is that the Soul has, the Nero doesn't have, is there's a little hook on the back here. I'm doing this left-handed, I usually do it a little better than that. There's a little uh, you know, plug on the back so you can pull it in and out. When you take it out of there, you can drop it into here, let me show you. You can hang this on there. Um, so just kind of a nice, keeps it out of the way. Um, just simple little things, just well thought out. There's a little button there as well. I don't know if you can see it. It says, uh, yeah, I can't get it to light up, but you can see that'll light up orange. That's the um, timer. If you want to set the timer to only charge after hours, you can do that. It's all in the front of the car. So really well thought out. I know if, if you don't drive an EV, you don't think about stuff like that, uh, but just well thought out charging area there. Let's jump in the car. Actually, let's just quickly go trunk, back seat, and just a couple things I like, and then we're gonna go all through the inside because that's really what I like the most. Uh, trunk space, Kia Soul does not look huge, except for when you compare it to some other small crossovers. We have a Mazda CX-3 on in uh, place, and, or on in the store right now, and it's got a tiny trunk. So the Soul's great because it has a huge opening. You fold down those seats, you can fold a dishwasher in there, you can fit all kinds of stuff in there. Um, I'm a big fan of a big hatchback style opening. The Soul trunk doesn't look huge, you can see, Mine gets dirty. I purposely didn't clean the interior of the vehicle just because I want to sort of show you some of the wear areas and why I think Kia does it smart. This floor that lowers, I kind of thought was a gimmick until I started using it. Um, it gives you a lot more space in the sole. You can see that we raise and lower it a lot. And there's some wear marks here just from the dirt and sand that uh, comes, but it doesn't really matter. Those clean off pretty clean. Uh, when you fold the seats down like this, there would be a step up and that's why the seats, the floor is in the higher position it folds basically flat with the seats, but we have it down like this quite often. Um, and it gives you the ability to um, just put your uh, stuff in there and nothing rolls out the back. One of the, I have a couple entrances to my driveway, I live on a corner lot and one side it uh, is on a bit of a hill. So nothing falls out if we park on that hillside. Um, the other thing that's nice, even with the floor lowered, you have a place to put your charger. So I know that a lot of people want a spare tire. This one doesn't come with a spare tire. And I've complained about that in the past, but I'm gonna be fair. I'm 41 years old. I have changed one tire on my own personal car in my life. Most of tire pressure, most tire issues come from tire pressure issues. This car's got tire pressure monitors. Um, so as much as I think, yes, for safety, that would be a good thing to have. The um, inflator kit is 
going to get you by. But you do have space, even with the floor lowered, to put your charger there or something else, uh, you know, gym shoes, whatever you want, underneath the floor, which, again, just something I kind of like. All right, backup camera down here is actually in a pretty good spot. You can sort of see it uh, right there, nice and hidden underneath the, the uh, area. All right, jumping inside, this is where we're talking about likes and don't likes. Actually, let me just go rear, rear seat first. You guys have heard me talk a lot about back, plastic back seats. Now you can see I have child seats. My kids are not the cleanest kids in the world. I should probably um, question what that streak is in the center of that seat. But there are a lot of, um, you know, kids are dirty. And I talked a lot about these plastic back seats. This is why my kids' feet constantly just brush up against there. And you can see how dirty that gets. Um, this cloth, perfectly clean. That plastic, kind of dirty. Now on this side, it is a leather type pouch, even though there's a um, cloth seats in here. Peter, you gotta clean your car. And yeah, you're right. I was gonna clean it for the video, but then I thought maybe I wouldn't for this exact reason. Um, when I talk about these plastic back seats in our other cars, I talk about that a lot. You can wipe this clean and it looks like brand new. And uh, that's a huge, uh, huge thing for me that I quite uh, like, given that my kids, sometimes their feet don't touch the ground yet. They're getting pretty tall now. They're almost out of these booster seats, but yeah. It's one thing that I quite like. I talk about it all the time. All right, we're gonna talk about real features now. First of all, everyone wants to know about range. I got the low range car. So this car is um, rated for 248 kilometers. Uh, just so here's an accurate thing. I had it at 100% when I left this morning. I gotta go do some driving this afternoon. Um, so it is at 295 kilometers of range. So the low range Kia Soul reliably gets for me 300 kilometers plus all summer. Now we can check exactly what it would be when it's full by simply doing this, clicking there, and we'll click, yeah, 304 kilometers when it's full. So I'm getting 300 to 307 every day, all summer long, regardless. That's what we're getting when it's full. Um, and that for me is more than enough. I wanna talk about range in a little bit. Um, I think range is something that people overestimate their needs and we called it perfectly with this car and it saved us some money. So I think that's important. So you'll see it says 295. That's the range number on the left side. This is sort of the bar graph of your range. It's always there for you. One thing I don't like, it's too large. Um, I, I just don't think you need to worry about running out of range. Most people know. Um, I feel like you could use that space better. Kilowatt hour size of the battery. Ooh, is it 27 point something? I'll have to double check that. I haven't, I uh, can't remember off the top of my head. It is the lower range of the two. Um, and they do two things to give you that range. So they shrink the battery down and they also deep, 39, is it 39? I think it's 29 or something. 64 and 39, yeah, that's right, 64 and 39. There you go, 39 kilowatt hour, thanks guys. All right, so they do uh, a couple things to get you that range. In this car, they shrink the battery down from the full size range and they also um, depower the motor. So I have the same torque, 295 foot-pounds of torque, 291 foot-pounds of torque, excuse me, but I only have 139 foot-pounds or 139 horsepower compared to 201. I will tell you, you don't really feel the difference because this car is lighter than that car and therefore it handles really well and it accelerates very well because you have the same amount of torque. The only time you really notice it is a little bit passing power, um, a little bit less passing power on the highway, like that 110 to 130 kilometers an hour. Uh, you probably have a little bit less, you do have a little bit less passing power than on the, um, the full range version. But in the round town, this car easily feels as quick and it might even feel a little bit quicker just because it's a lighter weight with the same amount of torque. So the, something to keep in mind. Um, real quick exercise, if you wanna know if an EV works for you, this is something I think everybody should do. Take a, um, take a tally of every trip you do, every day, how many kilometers you do for at least one month. Uh, whether it's both cars you have, one car, no matter what, and then dis you'll see how little you actually drive and you'll find out how long your car sits in the garage. For us, we do not want the longer range model. That's something that blows people's minds. People are, oh, more range, I won't buy an EV until you have um, you know, 500 kilometers of range. And our EV souls are getting pretty close to that in real world range. Uh, but the lower range model is perfect for us and we'll explain that a little bit later. So I love the range, love everything this. So big thing I like, see this big screen here? Technology everywhere, you don't get that in almost any other car. You can see it's a nice color display, um, very clear. My camera's not making it as clear as it is, but it is crystal clear, tons of information. Uh, little things like, like I said, tire pressure monitoring right there. I just have to drive, it tells me per tire. 
could probably get the long range model for the features. Yeah, maybe, but I get most of those features in this car. So when we talk long range for the features, that's a good question. You get the heads up display in the um, long range model. You get leather seats with ventilated seats. I have cloth seats, I prefer cloth. You get ambient lighting, which I'll talk about in a second, but you're not really getting a whole lot more features. You are, but you're not really getting a whole lot more practical features. Uh, so I love this screen. Lane keeping assist with the lane, uh, dip, lane follow um, is absolutely amazing in this car. Uh, I love it. And same with the smart cruise control. A lot of people don't realize you get smart cruise control on the lower range model. Smart cruise control with the um, electric vehicles is crazy smooth because you can go up and down in speed even to a full stop. Uh, when the cars in front of you go faster and slower, the car will adapt and go faster and slower. But even to a full stop, it's just so much smoother on electric vehicles. So that's a really good thing. Over here, uh, tons of information if you want there to be tons of information. This 10 and a quarter inch display is great. So the two things I don't like about it, let's just cover them real quickly. Um, if I go to my navigation right now, you can see that what I can do is I can put... Uh, all kinds of information on the right hand side. What I like to do is navigation screen here, which is basically like our eight inch screen used to be. And I can put the radio over there. When I go to Apple CarPlay Android Auto, somebody told me there was a setting, but I haven't found it yet. Um, it takes over, my Apple CarPlay takes over my full screen. So I can't see what's on my radio unless I adjust it and then it shows up in here, which is fine. But I just think Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, I don't need it to be full screen all the time. When it is full screen, it looks fantastic. But you know, you can do with a regular nav, let me just show you, I'm doing left-handed on the camera. Regular nav, you can go full screen or you can bring that piece in for a third. I like that. So that's the one thing I don't like about the um, information screen here. The only other thing I don't like is the Seltos came out. It's not that I don't like it, but the Seltos came out with multiple users. So I could customize this just for me. And I could also set a totally different customized setting for my wife. Um, I would like that to be available in a software update on this car. Currently it isn't. Same thing with the 2021 Telluride. It doesn't have that software update. Um, I just think that's a good feature that they could probably move into cars and they don't. All right, down here, automatic climate control. It's a single zone automatic climate control on all of the Soul EVs. It could be dual zone. It's not. Um, I, you know, dual zone is better. I don't know why they don't do it. I feel like they could. The only other thing that's kind of cool is this a little grid here, that little button right there. I don't know if I can see it. I have a new camera. Let me just see if I can get it focused. No, I won't be able to do it. In the window is a little tiny, tiny, tiny little grid. It's almost impossible to see, but it it's basically like the rear grid on your window, on your um, rear, let me just see. I don't know if you can sort of see the tinted area from here to there. There is a little tiny, tiny little grid line. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, it defrosts your entire windshield. They got rid of that for 2020, and they never had it on the long-range sole, only the short-range sole. I feel like it was a mistake that they left it on. It's one of the best features, and I'm frustrated they took it off, but I love that feature on my car. The entire windshield defrosts, defogs. Uh, even if the snow and ice, it clears it completely off. Works really well. Um, Driver-only mode in an EV doesn't really matter. Turn my air on so you got less uh, kilometers. Go to driver-only right now. I saved one kilometer. So driver-only mode is, a, is something you don't need in an EV. Uh, certainly doesn't save you enough to matter. Uh, the other thing I don't like, you can see, again, everything's dirty here. This is, can be pulled out and cleaned, this uh, rubber mat, which is fine. Uh, but one thing I think is silly is the other vehicle I have is a different brand of vehicle. I can plug in Apple CarPlay and Android Auto to um, any USB port, and it works. Now, the Kia K5 is coming out with wireless uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but not on the 10 and a quarter inch screen. That will be nice, um, but I do feel like other USB ports should be able to support um, a uh, a um, other USB port should be able to support uh, Android Auto Apple CarPlay, and there should be one down here if it's going to be wired in my armrest. So if I put one in my armrest, I can hide my phone, and it should support that. It doesn't. Wireless phone charging, amazing once you get used to it. Two levels of seat heating. A lot of our Kias have three levels. Uh, Souls have two. Doesn't bother me at all. I usually have it on full blast or the lowest one, so the middle range one wouldn't matter to me. Same thing. Drive modes, amazing on this car. Sport mode is super aggressive. You'll spin your tires all day long. Eco mode works really well, but still very powerful. Uh, don't really need a normal mode, but I feel like if it didn't have a normal mode, people would be um, people would be upset. Um, automatic parking brake, electronic parking brake. I never use the auto hold feature, but some people would. Heated steering wheel, even on this base trim. Another feature I don't think you should go without. The biggest thing with this EV is anybody can drive it. The gear shift is a little bit different. I quite like it. Click it that way to put it in drive. Click it that way to go in reverse. Hit the P for park and you're done. 
Um, super simple to use. It's different than like a Tesla. Tesla has no start button, a little bit harder to figure out. Um, the other thing that's really smart is the start button being here. Keep in mind, I never have to pull the key out of my pocket. So I get in the car, I hit start, put it in drive, and I'm gone. Same hand right there. Um, makes way more sense than having it buried up here. Uh, the Soul's always done it here. Uh, Saab's used to do that with their cars. They used to put a key in the center console, and the idea was the same thing. You would turn the key, you would release the parking brake, and you would put the car in gear. Um, and it was an airline uh, aircraft idea, and it makes a ton of sense. So I love all of that. What I don't like in the inside, this is white on this car. Now, again, I don't have the ambient lighting here, which I'm not, uh, you know, I don't need. But on the gas level soles without the ambient lighting, it's still like a gray color. And I just feel like the white, because I work in the car industry, it feels like it's um, an unpainted uh, thing that should be painted. See, the, these are silver, but that's white. Uh, it looks fine, but I just, to me, it looks like it doesn't match as well as it could, given that I have a lot of silver detail here, silver detail on the uh, paddle shifters, which are not paddle shifters, silver detail everywhere, uh, but that's white. I just feel like that shouldn't be white in the base level car. All right, if anybody has any questions, keep asking me or ask me for sure if you want. Um, one thing I will say, WeatherTech gave me the very first set of WeatherTech mats ever available in a Soul EV anywhere in the world. You can see I use them. It, uh, they do a good job of catching the dirt. It's a dirty car. This car needs to be cleaned, but you can see how well those work and how well they cover everything, including coming up the side there, which I quite like. So uh, shout out to WeatherTech, who uh, I was able to get the first set of WeatherTech mats for this car anywhere in the world, thanks to the videos that we do. Uh, I think that's why, and it's also thanks to some, probably some other stuff. So 28 of you are on. If anybody has any questions, now's a great time to ask them. I went a little long. Uh, I'm going to continue with this a little tiny bit before we wrap it up. Uh, so now's a great time to ask some questions. If there's anybody of the 28 of you that want to give me a like, 10 of you already did, but if anybody can give me a like, that would be great. Um, that always helps. Okay, Peter, you work at a dealership, just have to clean them. Yeah, get them cleaning for you. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you know how it works when you work at a dealership. Customers come well before us. Again, I did leave it dirty, especially in the back seats, so you can see those plastic back seats. I always, always talk about the benefit of these plastic back seats. A lot of people think they're just a cheaper way to do it than leather or cloth. But uh, let me show you, that is a dirty area. It wipes perfectly clean with just a damp cloth. And um, that's why I left it dirty, because I think that makes a ton of sense and keeps it clean. All right, real quick, uh, charging. Uh, you guys probably want to know about charging. Go ahead, ask me questions. I'll still uh, take them. Charging is something that's been very interesting to me. Um, so here's the thing. Tim said I could tell you what kind of car I drive. There's a few of you that always ask that. Uh, the other car I drive, people talk about... Uh, what is the savings versus this versus a gas Kia Soul? Here's the thing why it works different in my family. The other vehicle I drive happens to be a pickup truck. We don't sell pickup trucks here, so yes, I'm breaking news. Peter from Bradford Kia, the other car he drives is not a Kia. Um, pickup trucks are very useful. We don't have them, and that's why I drive one. Uh, but, of course, they're not very fuel efficient. So 70 to 80 kilometers or 70 to 80 dollars is what it costs me to fill up that truck easily. Um, this car is seven to eight dollars to go the same distance as I go seventy to eighty dollars on my pickup truck. So I'm not comparing mileage between a gasoline Kia Soul and an electric Kia Soul. I'm actually comparing mileage between the electric car and a gasoline pickup truck because what happens in my family is we use this as our primary car. We always told everybody this would be our secondary car, but it is a hundred percent our primary car. If we have to go anywhere even if it's over the range that we're going to use on this car, we often take this car. The only time I use my truck is when my wife and I have to be at two different places at the other at different times. I take uh, the truck. She usually takes this because she drives a little further. And on vacation, I have a trailer that I tow. This does not tow that trailer. So that's why it's helpful. So uh, it's amazing how much the Soul EV will hold when shopping and the rear seats are folded down. Yes. So this car, the Soul overall, is crazy practical. You can go to Ikea. So here's the thing with going to Ikea. You can go to Ikea, fold down the seats, get a free charge, free charge, and then come home. So it actually saves you on fuel to go to Ikea and buy stuff there, which is kind of fun. Uh, real quick about charging, though, and range. Like I said, for me, moving to this range of car, I have zero regrets. Um, battery is something you pay for up front. So this car is significantly cheaper, uh, ten or eleven thousand dollars cheaper than the uh, long range Kia Soul. Now, yes, you lose a few features, but the key features you don't lose. Um, so the big thing that I find with going with this car is 
like I say, battery is something you pay for up front, whereas charging is something you pay for as you go. I almost never have had to charge outside of my home. And that means that charging is incredibly inexpensive. There are free charging out there, but um, what I've found is 300 kilometers in the summer, over 200 all winter long, even with winter tires, even in bad weather, is more than enough range that I need. And if I do need more than that, I still have another vehicle. So that's the big thing is that I think people are overestimating the range they're gonna need, especially if this is your second vehicle. And the reason I say make this your second vehicle, you say, oh, it's an expensive second vehicle. Well, it will become your primary vehicle. You're just gonna have to keep that other vehicle around for those few trips where you need it because it has a little bit more range and you don't wanna to stop to charge. Uh, charging can be done very quickly. So um, like in less than an hour, you can get 80% of the charge in this car. So that's pretty good. Uh, but yeah, it's not a big deal. And again, I have run the entire year on the level one charger. I plug it in the wall like I plug my cell phone in because we forget how often our car sits. Now, again, I've only got 13,000 kilometers on this car, but you can run with the level one charger if you plan a little bit. And the best thing about this car, when we talk about range anxiety, what the only anxious times I have now is when I'm driving my truck and I know the truck is sitting on empty and I go, oh man, I gotta fill it up before I get to work or I gotta fill it up on the way home from work. This car, I check the app on my phone, I check the charge, which is what I did last night and I knew I had to go to my, uh, do some traveling this evening after work. So uh, I said, okay, so I walk out to the car during a commercial break on TV, plug the car in, walk back inside and I don't think it's more than a 30 second commercial and I'm done. I haven't had any inconvenience at all and I leave every day with a full tank of gas. And think about what 300 kilometers is on your car. It's probably three quarters of a tank of gas, uh, three fifths of a tank of gas for sure. Uh, if you can drive that day without having to get gas, then that's what this car does every single day. You're never actually low. So there we go. Okay, you guys are talking about the floor. Da, 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 da. What's the benefit of the cargo mat floor? Uh, cargo floor mat, she knows I don't have. Uh, we'll talk about preheating, that's a good question. I'm not sure what you're talking about, the benefit, uh, benefit of a cargo floor mat would just be to keep it clean, I assume. So let's talk about preheating and pre-cooling. Uh, used to be people thought you had to have the car plugged in to preheat and pre-cool. So what I do is I pull out my cell phone, um, I have presets done, whether the car is in the garage or out of the garage. If it's out of the garage, I turn on the windshield defrost and uh, the heated steering wheel is on and the car warms up, heated steering wheel is warm when I get in. It doesn't have to be plugged in to do that. A lot of people think it does. Uh, you don't have to have it plugged in for that. I just do it right from the app on my phone and uh, off I go. So. Heating and cooling, same thing. I just tap the app on my phone, walk to the car, it's pre-cooled. The other thing that's great about an EV that people forget about is in a gasoline car, heating and, and uh, air conditioning take a, lot of, um, take a lot of time to get hot or cold. I can turn this on right now and I'll just tell you, hot air coming out of here right now and already it's room temperature. By the time the fan's going full, it's full cold. The air is instantly cold. Um, in your air conditioning. So when you talk about letting, you know, what I do is I get in the car, if I haven't pre-cooled it, I open the windows for a couple seconds, the air conditioning is blowing cold before I've driven basically out of the parking spot and I have cold air. So that's a huge advantage of an EV that you don't think about, but one of the reasons I love about an EV. Uh, does the 39 kilowatt hour version also have a heat pump as, no. So this one doesn't have the heat pump. It is just electric heat. Um, in my winter use with winter tires driving in poor weather, I never went below 200 kilometers of range, including with the winter tires. They do suck some range. The winter tires definitely take some range away. Um, so I have basically 300 in the summer. I stayed over 200 all winter, and that's with no heat pump. The heat pump, basically what it does is it, re, it captures the regenerative braking energy and sends it back uh, into the cabin uh, instead of letting it go to waste. This car just lets it go to waste. That being said, it's range is just not an issue with me. I never, in the winter on bad weather, I never go 200 kilometers. I did go to Toronto and back in bad weather in the coldest part of the month, driving highway speeds to Toronto and back, 100 kilometers each way, and still had, uh, you know, I wouldn't say plenty of range, but had no concerns of running out of range all the way home, um, driving highway speeds, 200 kilometers at highway speeds in the winter. So for me, that's good. Air conditioning never relies on engine speed, so it stopped traffic. Yeah, exactly. So. Air conditioning works great no matter what. Stop and go, everything else. And it is instant cold almost. What kind of preventive maintenance is needed on the heat pumps? I don't have any word on the heat pump. There is 
So basic maintenance, we'll just talk real basic. Again, I don't have that in my car. The only maintenance I've done is I swap my tires. If you're buying an EV in Canada, buy winter tires with it. Just do it, you'll thank me later. You're gonna lose some range, you're gonna gain a bunch of traction, but here's what it's gonna do. Technicians are used to uh, seeing your car and they make a judgment call, oh, this has to be done this oil change or it can wait till next oil change. That's kind of how they operate. Uh, with an EV, if they see your car, you could go two years before they see your car again. So buy winter tires, throw them on, but do that at the dealership because the one thing you're gonna wanna do on these cars is you wanna get the brakes serviced. When you get the brakes serviced, uh, maybe once a year, whatever it needs, um, they, the wheels have to come off, they take a look at the brakes. If they know that you're swapping your tires at the dealership, they know they're gonna see me in the spring, they know they're gonna see me in the fall. So they can look at my uh, brakes in the fall and go, you know what, you're good to go through the winter, let's check them out in the spring again. Whereas otherwise they may wanna call them early. Uh, I have seen dealers make bad decisions on EVs for maintenance, uh, more maintenance on some certain cars that went to certain dealers uh, than they would have typically had at ours. Uh, so keep in mind, a good EV dealer is something to keep in mind, but brake services are gonna be a key piece of your maintenance. If you swap your tires at a dealership, they can look at your brakes twice a year. They know when you'll be back. They know how to predict when to do that. I have not done any maintenance on this car for a year. No oil changes, no brake service, no nothing. Uh, when I take the wheels off in the fall, we're gonna have a, ta have a peek at um, the brakes again, and we'll keep you updated if we have to do anything there, but no maintenance for an entire year. I expect to do a brake service and go another year with no more maintenance as well. Um, so that's kind of a nice thing. Uh, yes, tire pressure monitors show the actual tire pressure per tire. So um, you can see exactly what your tires are per tire. You have to drive to display that, which is why I can't do it right now. Um, but yeah, we can do that. Uh, maybe someday we'll do that. Um, so there we go. Those of you that want to see under the hood, I can show you that if you want to see. I think somebody asked. But basically, summary of my ownership experience. No maintenance, no oil changes. It means amazing. Range anxiety does not exist because I leave my house with, you know, 300-ish kilometers, and I just don't drive that in my secondary car. The only time I drive that far is when I go on vacation, um, and then I sometimes take my other vehicle because it tows a trailer. Uh, so I've never, ever had range anxiety in this car other than when I purposely brought it down, and that's been fun because I realized how far I can actually go. That range number that it shows is real-world range. It's very good at predicting. Um, charging is amazing. It's super simple. Your car spends forever sitting. It'll be easy to charge. When will you ever, I just told you what my second vehicle was. You guys, so this is the thing. I always, when I talked to earlier, you guys want to know what my second vehicle is. And I was told on this video, I can tell you guys. The second vehicle I have is a Chevrolet Colorado pickup truck. Yes, Peter from Brantford Kia doesn't have two Kias. Uh, the reason I drive that is because we tow a trailer and we do not sell a pickup truck here. And for some of the stuff I do, a pickup truck is necessary or certainly better than uh, what we have. And uh, so I have a pickup truck. That's why when we talk about range, I'm not comparing my gasoline savings compared to an EV. A lot of people say, oh, the sole EV versus the gas EV or the gas uh, sole. That's how I'm going to compare numbers. What I do is on my truck, 70 to $80 is a 500 kilometers, where this is seven to $8 for 500 kilometers. So this car makes a ton of sense for us to make as our everyday vehicle for that reason. So there you guys go. You know both of my vehicles. I've told you my other one. My, actually, my other vehicle is in a uh, Kia video. You guys can find that later. All right, I think we've covered all that. Uh, I'm sure if you're watching this far, if you have questions that I missed that you wanna go over, um, let's do that in the comment section. I'll keep this video, I'll try to keep an eye on the comment section as best I can. Um, like I said, if you're gonna buy an EV, first thing is don't expect to make up the purchase price in fuel savings. I don't know that that always works out. To me, I would say this car compared to a high level Kia Sportage, probably similar priced. I had a government discount to bring this down to that area. Uh, similar features, I don't get all wheel drive. I do get an EV powertrain. To me, that's worth it. Um, range is something that you may be surprised at how little range you need. So I would say if you're thinking about an EV, track your mileage for a month, uh, see how many times you would run out of range. And on those times you run out of range, keep in mind there may be chargers. Uh, if this is gonna be your second vehicle in your household, certainly lower range makes a lot of sense for a lot of people. Um, if it's replacing a gasoline vehicle as your only vehicle, then I would say go long range. But as a second vehicle, um, you know, when you have the option to take a different vehicle for your family, 
uh, for longer range, then you can do that. We still use this even when we've had to charge it a couple times, uh, knowing it will run low on range because it is just a great car, fun to drive, comfortable, seats are comfortable, cargo space is plenty for us, and uh, fuel savings is right there. So um, I would say do that. Charge times, if you're getting the low range one and you don't drive a ton, a level one charger might do for you. I recommend level two chargers to just about everybody. I'm still running a year later, just plugging this in the wall like I do a cell phone. It takes a long time to charge, but I, the car sits so much, I never have an issue. If I use all 300 kilometers today and I charge it overnight, I'm going to get about 100 to 120, 130 back, depending on when I plug it in. Tomorrow, I'm not going to do more than 60 kilometers, and then I'll just plug it in again. So uh, it's very rare that I do over 200 kilometers in a day. Uh, at all. So for most of the time, it's less than 100 kilometers a day. This car is never out of charge, ever. And you can always fast charge uh, anywhere, in town, level two or level three, whatever you want to do. All right, so there we go. What would be your next EV choice if you're planning on upgrading? So my next EV, um, I'm not planning on upgrading at all. I think this car will go on to my kids. My kids are uh, almost eight and nine years old. So when they start driving, they will start driving on this car uh, and it will probably go down to them whatever you know whenever we pass this on to them so maybe 10 years down the road we'll give it to my kids uh then i'll look at what we're driving for an ev for my family um i don't know I, there's nothing i would rather buy than this right now um it's just really there's this is still the best car out there one world urban car of the year for a reason it's a really really good car i would not upgrade um favorite ev that's interesting to me that i that is actually coming out that i've heard of the rivian sounds interesting to me uh, I like pickup trucks and it's interesting, but again, I don't think I can tell with that. Have I noticed any battery degradation? Okay, that's a really, really good question. So let's talk battery degradation real quick. One, short answer, no, I haven't noticed anything at all. Last year, I got one charge up to 322 kilometers, but I was driving fairly easily around then. Everything last year was about 307 kilometers, 305 kilometers, 302 kilometers. I'm still seeing the exact same range a year later. Um, the way I deal with battery, battery degradation is this. The car was promised to me with 248 kilometers of range. Um, that's always been, in, traditionally before a year ago, that was in ideal conditions. Um, used to be you buy an EV, our old sole EV was 179 kilometers of range. Those were in ideal conditions. It would be less if you had wind or highway speeds, those kind of things. This car is rated for 248 kilometers. I expect that to still be the case five, seven years from now. Uh, that I'm still getting real world 248 kilometers. So buy on the range number, but if you're buying a Kia, you can expect far more than that range. So zero range degradation at all in this. You had a 2015 for three years. We did notice such, uh, did not notice any notice in range. Okay, so there you go. So the 2015, the previous Soul is different than these. I expect these batteries to have less degradation than those. They manage the temperature a lot better on these. Um, and I've noticed literally none. I drive the car more aggressively now than I did the first uh, few months. And I'm seeing um, the same 300 plus kilometers this summer, even with my more aggressive driving than I did last year. So um, I don't know if that helps, but at this point, no real degradation at all. Again, not a high mileage car. It's only 13,000 kilometers. Uh, we would have put more on, but again, this whole COVID stuff, uh, my wife has been working from home the entire time. So it's, uh, we're not driving as much because of that. Uh, there we go. I think we're going to wrap it up there. We've got 43 minutes. Uh, it's a lot of information. If anybody has any questions, again, let us know in the comments. There's 34 of you on right now. If you want to give me a like, 32 of you, you just dropped off because I said I was wrapping it up. If anybody can give me a like on this video, you guys know how YouTube works. That'd be great. If I can earn your subscription, like I said, a lot more EV content to come. Uh, nice color. Yeah, this is the gravity gray color. Um, there's a lot more EV content to come. We have a number of EVs coming in stock. Uh, we will be doing some more proper edited EV videos as well, so you can get a lot of the information in 15 minutes instead of 45. Uh, but yeah, we have that coming up. And if anybody wants to ask me my opinion, there's my honest opinion. A couple things they did wrong on this car. Uvo uh, should be, or sorry, not Uvo. Apple CarPlay should be able to plug into more ports. Um, the white trim on the lower, uh, the white trim over here looks to me to not blend into the car the same way the silver one could have. Any, key, any upcoming Kia EVs with towing capabilities? Nothing that I've heard of. Um, I wouldn't rule it out, but here's the thing with towing. Towing really saps range in an EV, and uh, I don't think Kia is going to go down that road yet. I think the first ones you're going to see that are towing is going to be the Ford, the GM, uh, Rivian, Tesla. Those are all going to be the ones that we see towing first. 
and you're going to need more efficient trailers, lighter weight, more aerodynamic trailers if you want to do the same type of traveling that we have been doing. There was a Tesla that traveled across North America, and a uh, nice thing with an EV when you go to a campground, you get an electric site, you have essentially free electricity, you're paying for your campsite, so there you go. Thanks for the view of the Soul EV, there you go. Do you know if you can use Android Auto Wireless? Not yet, in the Kia K5 you can. Towing also affects with gas, exactly. The difference with towing with an electric vehicle is it still takes longer to charge. Uh, towing with my gas vehicle, yeah, I do that all the time, and it does suck a lot of fuel there too, but I can charge or refill quicker on a gas car still. So there we go. Is it a little rough in the road? Actually, I find this to be smoother in the road. It is a little bit heavier than the regular Soul, so the suspension is designed a little different. I find our EVs to be among the best driving cars we have, so I don't know if that helps answer that question. And uh, there we go. I think we're going to wrap it up. You guys have asked good questions. We've gone 45 minutes. That's plenty long enough. Um, I apologize for the sound quality at the beginning of the video. We'll deal with that. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. And hopefully I can earn your subscription. We've got lots more content like this to come. So thanks everybody for watching. Have a great afternoon.